is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we go now to the occupied West Bank, where Palestinians held a general strike Thursday after Israeli forces killed 11 Palestinians, injured 500, in a rare daytime military raid in the city of Nablus Wednesday. It is a day of mourning period and a strike. How would we be able to work or eat or drink and our brothers in Nablus are being killed? We should stand in solidarity with them, with the people of Nablus, and there should be a general strike. And thank God the strike is in all the West Bank and Gaza. So far this year, Israel's killed at least 65 Palestinians, including 13 children. Early this morning, a 22-year-old Palestinian man named Mohammed Jawabra died a day after being shot in the head during an Israeli raid on the Arub refugee camp north of Hebron. On Thursday, Palestinians held funerals for the victims of uh, Israel's raid in Nablus. One victim was a 72-year-old Palestinian man named Adnan Barra. His son, Ashraf, said that his father was on his way to the market when he was killed. In the morning, my father went out from the shop to buy some stuff. Then the Israeli army raided the neighborhood. He called me and asked me if there are soldiers in the neighborhood, so I told him yes. They are surrounding the neighborhood from all sides. Suddenly, someone called me and said, your father is injured. I was at my shop besieged. I could leave the shop after the army left the city. We're joined now by the Israeli journalist Amira Haas, the Haaretz correspondent for the occupied Palestinian territory. She's based in Ramallah. Her latest piece is headlined, Israel's raid on Nablus proves willingness of more young Palestinians to die in an unwinnable battle. Amira Haas is the only Israeli Jewish journalist to have spent 30 years living in and reporting from Gaza and the West Bank. We're also joined by the Palestinian activist Issa Amro. He's in Hebron. He's the founder of the Hebron-based direct action group Youth Against Settlements, now leads the American charity Friends of Hebron. Um, let's begin with you, uh, Issa. Uh, you're in Hebron. We just uh, reported on a killing of an Israeli, uh, of a Palestinian uh, man there. Uh, can you talk about what's happening and what happened in this rare daytime raid in Nablus, that where so many Palestinians were killed and hundreds injured? Yes. Uh, two days ago, the uh, military forces raided Nablus during the daytime. And they shot uh, uh, many, many Palestinians. Uh, they used live ammunition to kill, to shoot, to confirm the killing of uh, many Palestinians. The Palestinians all over West Bank and Gaza and East Jerusalem were very uh, sad. And uh, they announced a strike yesterday. And yesterday, clashes started in uh, Al Arub refugee camp uh, in Hebron. The Israeli soldiers shot. Uh, a Palestinian on the head, and many others were uh, injured. And unfortunately, he passed away this morning, and today it was his uh, funeral. There is a, a huge anger among the Palestinians from what is happening these days from the Israeli uh, racist uh, and fascist uh, government, who are inciting to kill more and more uh, Palestinians. We see that uh, the Ibrahim Mosque massacre, which happened 29th, uh, 20, uh, 29 years ago, where when Baruch Goldstein went into the mosque and killed uh, 29 Palestinians. And the uh, supporters of that massacre, the supporters of Baruch Goldstein, they are the ones who are in power. They are in the government. They are the ones who are now leading the Israeli occupation forces all over uh, West Bank and East Jerusalem. Amir Haas, um, you wrote in detail about what is happening in Nablus. And, you know, you've taught in, in New York, for example, at NYU as well. And uh, if you can explain to an audience outside, uh, around the world, what are the details of this attack, from the drones that opened fire uh, to the unmarked cars? Explain why—just um, give us the picture of Nablus. Yeah. Uh, hi, hi, Amy. Yeah. Um, I haven't been in, in Nablus after the raid. I was in uh, Nablus in an, uh, after an, uh, uh, an earlier raid and in Janine. So the pattern is, is there is one pattern very clear that an Israeli undercover unit enters a Palestinian, mostly Janine and Nablus, uh, in a car disguised as some Palestinian uh, a food company or something like that. They enter, they, they, uh, they uh, um, 
uh, find positions, shooting positions around a house where they believe uh, that some Palestinian uh, armed activists uh, stay. And usually this is correct. And then they are supposed to tell, to, to, to ask them to, um, or to demand them leave. And if they refuse, they keep shooting until the people are being killed in their, uh, in their hiding place or not hiding place. It happened in Janine, it happened in Janine, in, 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 it has been happening a lot over the years. But there is an intensific intensification of this uh, during the last, uh, the last year. Um, you know, when the Palestinian armed activists decide to give themselves in, it might not end up in so many, in so many casualties. But the thing is that you, you see that these youngsters, it's people, who are uh, uh, not older, not older than 30 at most, very often younger, they just decide that they don't want to go to prison. Uh, they, they, they want to, to, to convey a message in the name of the entire Palestinian people that they've had enough and they are ready to die. And I think this is, this is a very uh, a clear message of the last, uh, uh, of those activists, armed activists over the past years over the past year, uh, out of the 11 people killed in Naples, six were armed people. So uh, I think we should remember this, that they decide to take arms and to fight the invading army. They decide not to give themselves in. And, uh, but of course, when the army decides to enter a city so, so big as Nablus uh, on daytime at 9, 9.30, and then stay there till 12, 12.30 when all the kids go back from school. And to be near the mar a, a, a marketplace, it's clear that the army and the police, because it's most of the police that does the shooting, uh, I mean, in, that, in these cases, uh, it's clear that they decide to, they don't care about how many people uh, they kill and how many people they injure. Because so the, this roads is, uh, are, the roads are packed because this is in the middle of the day and people are going to market. Sure, it's packed. It's, it's, then the drones, I don't know yet. This is something that I still have to check. Uh, there they were drones as they were in Janine and Nablus in former raids, but, uh, but I'm not sure yet that these drones were shooting. But the fear, even the very knowledge that those drones not only uh, are surveillance drones or drones that, that, that uh, launch tear gas canisters, but uh, or tear gas, but they can also shoot. You can imagine how much it adds to the um, uh, to the fear. But it, there is not only fear. If if there are enough uh, footage, though they don't allow ambulances and 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 uh, journalists to approach the place, and this has been so for very for several raids already. But still, from the little footage that I saw, maybe there is more. You see that there are uh, hundreds of young men or tens of young men so brave that they go out without arms, only with stones, and uh, throw at the uh, Israeli, at the military vehicles. Uh, and I guess that many of them were, were injured, if not killed. So, um, well, uh, let me go this to, time. Let me go to Isa Amro no, no, So what's important to oh. know, so what's important is to also stress that there is a resistance. So in every such raid, people resist it. It's not just, you know, uh, 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 um, a, a quiet scene where all of a sudden the army comes in. It comes into a, a, a quiet scene, but then people resist it. So, Issa Amro, um, an Israeli soldier was recently jailed for 10 days after he attacked you. As you were being interviewed by the Pulitzer Prize-winning author Lawrence Wright, I want to play a short clip of what happened. Don't touch me, Tilly. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, hey! Leave him! Bro, what the? What the? Boom. I want an ambulance. I don't do What's the matter with you, guy? Are you so bored? After video of the attack uh, on you went viral, Israel's far-right national security minister, Itmar Ben-Gavir, uh, who's been convicted uh, on inciting racism charges, expressed full support for the Israeli soldier who attacked you. Describe the scene and what happened. 
Uh, what happened that I lead uh, tours in my own uh, city to show uh, Israelis, internationals, Palestinians, the reality of the Israeli occupation, the real peace of the Israeli occupation in my own city, the closed streets, the closed markets, the checkpoints, the, the settlers' presence in the middle of my own city. There are streets where I'm not allowed to walk as a Palestinian, in spite that I was born there and I was uh, raised there and I, all my childhood was there. So me and uh, Mr. Wright, I wa he was walking on the main street and I was walking on the graveyard because I'm not allowed to walk on the main street. And, uh, you know, a, a Belgian photographer was with Mr. Wright. I was speaking to Mr. Wright, showing him the reality closed shops, closed markets, and how few uh, Palestinian families, they use the back door to get into their homes because the main door is uh, is closed. The, the soldiers didn't like that. Usually, they don't want us to uh, show the reality of the Israeli occupation, especially to uh, internationals. So the soldier approached me and asked me to leave and not talk to them. Uh, I really told the soldier, no, I'm allowed, and uh, I don't have time. OK, Lawrence, we will meet where we are allowed to meet. Then I reached the point where I'm allowed to, to meet uh, Lawrence and the Belgian photographer. I found the soldier forcing the Belgian photographer to delete her video, which she, she filmed. So I told him, no, I'm allowed. What are you doing? We are allowed to film this. And uh, according to the military law, the tiny rights we have as Palestinians in the it military law, we are allowed to do it. So the soldier got very angry. How come I tell him that I'm allowed? He, you know, uh, caught me from my shoulder, you know, violently detained me in, in, the, in the street and, uh, you know, threatened me, intimidated me. Then he came, caught me from my, from my throat, threw me to the ground and kicked me again and hit me again. Uh, other soldiers, you know, took him away from me because of the camera. And it's not a rare incident. It's the case of all the Palestinians who are living under the Israeli occupation and apartheid and face the Israeli soldiers' brutality and the settler violence. Then I asked for an ambulance. I didn't get. Uh, soldiers were rejoicing with the settlers for what happened uh, yeah. to me. Uh, settlers were spatting on me when I was on the ground, and I was really ill-treated, traumatized, and I was in pain, asking for help, Issa, and nobody helped me from the Israeli side. I hate to keep traumatizing you further, but I wanted to ask you about the Israeli authorities arresting you last year, shortly after you posted a video showing an Israeli soldier throwing an Israeli activist to the ground and then punching them in the face in the city of Hebron, uh, in the occupied West Bank. Before you were released, you were beaten at the police station, your home raided. Uh, the Israeli activist, Miko Peled, tweeted, uh, Issa's life is in danger, and there must be guarantees to his personal safety. Miko Peled is the son of the legendary Israeli general Mahi Peled. Um, talk about that. Yes, now Miko Peled is receiving online death threats too for doing this kind of uh, things. Yes, last November, the same case as uh, last week, what happened to with me, Israeli soldier punished an Israeli visitor who tried to apologize for Palestinian families who were attacked by fanatic extreme Israeli settlers. And I found another soldier I mean, saying that Itamar Bingvir will, t will make an uh, order here and he will get rid of you. Filming that made me a target. And uh, the Israeli media described me as a provocator. As last week, they, they, they didn't blame the soldier for what he did to me. They blamed me for filming. They blamed me from reporting. This is the case of many other a human rights defender. Israel tries to hide the truth. They don't want us to report. They don't want us to document the human rights violation. With my case, the soldier attacked me. The Israeli army spokesperson lied about what happened with me. The Israeli official, Itamar Bingvir, who is the national security minister, backed up the soldier and gave a green light to other soldiers to shoot and kill and uh, attack Palestinians and attack me. The Israeli media Say, described me as a provocator, and the Israeli public they didn't defend me and they didn't denounce the uh, Israeli soldiers' behavior in the in uh, one week ago and in last November. So the soldiers they have a real uh, an environment and atmosphere of uh, incitement and escalation, and you know they want to be really uh, you know following Itamar Bingvir and other uh, populists to 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 show Palestinians more. Uh, brutality and, you know, to revenge from uh, a Palestinian human rights defender who document the human rights violation. And really, I, I, am, I have fear of my life from 
what I see from the Israeli soldiers and the backup from the army and the backup from the government and even the backup of the, from the Israeli uh, media, which is giving the soldiers excuses for what they are doing. You know, what happened me... with me, so it was so obvious on videos, but the Israeli media lied about it and the Israeli army lied about it. Uh, is, um, Amira Haas, I, we're going to end with you. Um, you have the attack on Nablus. You hear what Issa is describing. You've got Israel's military bombing parts of the Gaza Strip after Palestinian militants fired rockets at southern Israel um, this week, um, with the Nablus raid being a huge provocation. Where is this going? We have 30 seconds. Oof, yeah. Uh, look, I mean, everything that was has been described here has happened before. But the, the, and to Issa as well, uh, on, also under former uh, governments. The problem that now, and Israel has always ex ex was experimenting after the Nakba with um, um, sorts of expulsion. What I'm afraid now is that we have uh, uh, the strongest people in this present Israeli government are uh, politicians of the right wing who have openly advocated for mass expulsion of Palestinians. It's Smotrich and Ben Gvir. They are the strongest. And if you go to Hebron, where Issa lives, Amira, then it is the... the... We're going to have okay. to leave it there.